we're just going to give everyone just a couple minutes while they settle in. So uh, the webinar will be starting here in a couple minutes. So previously when we were so using we're just going to give everyone just a couple uh, a minute or two more and then we'll we'll start us off to kill the music. Uh, well, I would like to welcome everyone, at, welcome everyone to our webinar, Everything You Need to Know About the International Student Program. Um, meet the host. So my name is Lydia Williams. I'm the Student, Service, student Services Administrator here at MFC Training. I'm joined by Carrie Taylor, our Admissions Officer, and Paul Slaney, our Director of Training. And we also have a member of our marketing team, Aiden, who is doing uh, controlling our, our webinar slides for us today. So this is our agenda. These are kind of the high points that we're going to go through today. We're going to talk a little bit about what the program is about, and then we're going to go into what is being offered and the highlights of the program. Uh, following that, we'll talk about the flight training itself. Uh, and then we're going to open up the, question, the, the floor for your guys' questions and answers. So towards the end, you'll be able to type your uh, questions into that chat function uh, down at the bottom. And um, we'll just start off. Excellent. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Lydia, so much for the introduction, and uh, welcome to our International Student Program webinar. We are super excited to talk to you about this new comprehensive training program. MFC has a fairly large uh, amount of experience training students from over 65 countries in almost a century of flight. We are proud to launch this program. This program for MFC achieves what no other flight training program in Canada can afford, which is a comprehensive, full-service commercial pilot training experience completed in just one year. Of course, you can check out more information on this program by visiting our website at mfctraining.com, and uh, you can even fill out a form on that website as well. You'll notice in the bottom corner, there's a little chat bubble, and you can check uh, chat directly to one of our amazing team members on the call here today that can help you with all your questions and any uh, items you may want to discuss for your uh, career training. Like I said, uh, we've trained a lot of international students and uh, Aiden on here is going to show you a little uh, video uh, from one of our best and brightest Rohit Bojwani. Um, you'll find this video as well. If you look at the international students section of our website online, you will see uh, this short little video of Rohit. Uh, Rohit has been an amazing ambassador and mentor to our students, both internationally and domestically. Uh, Rohit grew up in Brazil. I believe he has roots in India. And uh, he started training with us back in 2015 after successfully completing all of his license. Uh, he joined us, uh, joined our team at MFC Training 
as a flight instructor in 2018 and uh, has been working with us uh, ever since as a flight instructor and a ground school instructor. So we're very happy to uh, have Rohit. So I'll just turn it over to Aiden here right quick. He's going to play the short video. Once again, you'll find this video on our website, mfctraining.com. Uh, over to you, Aiden. And of course, like every live event, <laughs> we have to wait for the uh, wonderful YouTube video here to just uh, to just get going. Uh, give us a second. Oh, it looks like we're having some connection uh, difficulties here. Just give us one minute, folks. Uh, Carrie, do you have uh, that video? You could try to see if you can share it very quick with, our, with everyone. Yep, I think uh, everybody can see the screen there now, eh? We certainly can, yep. Thanks for reaching out. My name is Rohit Bojwani, and I started my training back in 2015. After completing my commercial pilot license, I moved on to become an instructor here at the college. MFC training has its roots tracing back to 1929, and we are the most established and largest flight school here in Canada. We have over 57 aircraft and some of the best weather for flight training. Our staff are here to ensure you finish your training on budget and on time. My journey started here in Moncton, New Brunswick, and I hope you can join us to start your journey here too. Excellent. Thank you, Kerry, for uh, helping us get over that little speed bump here this morning. <laughs> so let's jump right in and talk a little bit more in detail about our program. Um, so what is ISP or International Student Program? What makes it different? Well, over the years, um, we have seen a lot of international students come through the doors of our college. Uh, but what most people don't know is the people we see who can't make it to our college. And uh, what we did, is they just hit one barrier after another. It's either the visa process, accommodations, uh, you name it, we've seen a lot. And unfortunately, uh, it's pretty disappointing for people who want to uh, come over and train with us. So last year, our team at the college, we got together and we talked to our students. We talked to the people that wanted to come here that couldn't. And we, we said, you know, what are the barriers? What is it that these students are facing so that they can't leave a, the country they're in to come train in our country? And um, we heard things like, you know, I, I have trouble finding somewhere to live. I'm, I'm nervous about training in a new country. Um, I can't get my visa approved. I can't get a hold of anyone to ask about my visa. What documents do I fill out? What website do I go to? It's complicated. And the overall theme was, I wish I had someone to help. And we heard, we listened and we heard. We then got together as our team and we said, how can we overcome these barriers? How do we remove these barriers to best target and offer assistance to our students that want to come train with us? And in short, this led to the creation of this International Student Pilot Program. Uh, this comprehensive full service program uh, is very similar to uh, things that MFC has done in the past with other clients, uh, but let's talk a little bit about it here. We have on the left side of the screen, we have visa assistance. Now this is very important for anyone who, who, uh, who's looking to train in a different country. Uh, I know myself, if I had to apply for a visa for another country, I would probably start off and say, well, you know, where do I start? Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the visa assistance in the next uh, slide because it is important. Uh, we'll also uh, talk a little bit about uh, accommodations later on. So accommodations. Uh, I had a, a young, my young child went to school as well. Even in Canada, it's challenging finding somewhere to live, having to go over and look at different places, try to find the right, the right location for somebody. So yeah, that can be a significant challenge for individuals. So we decided to take the worry out of that for the uh, students in this program. We will help you find a place to live when, when you arrive. We have an on-site dormitory. We have uh, connections with uh, many local uh, area individuals for accommodations and of course based on availability. 
We also have a full on-site cafeteria in our building. And because of this, we can offer our students an optional meal plan, taking the worry out of, you know, having to go around and, and no transportation and all that stuff to try to get, you know, groceries and food. So we do have that optional buy-in meal program as well. We do have language training. Carrie's going to get into that a little later on in our presentation today and go over, you know, how we can help with that. And you'll see some of the creative and exciting things that we do at the college to help with the language transition with training in a new country. Also, we will go into our flight training ICPC program. And uh, Kerry will, again, uh, our, our resident expert on this program, he can get into a lot more detail. And once again, on the website, ask the questions, you can get some more information uh, on that particular program. And he'll touch a little bit on that here today. All right, so let's jump into what we call for short, the RCIC. And of course, that stands for the Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant. The uh, Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant is an authorized immigration citizenship representative uh, that works here at MFC, uh, who's here to help evaluate your visa application and submit it on your behalf. We received a lot of feedback from students on how hard this process can be uh, and how the hurdles uh, and how hard the hurdles are that one has to navigate to get their visa approved. So having this RCIC uh, consultant uh, at MFC in your corner is uh, very valuable. So let's talk a little bit about what value that an RCIC can bring to you applying to come to our school. Well, for one, like I said earlier, I wouldn't know where to start if I had to go get a visa in another country. The RCIC is obviously a regulated position. Uh, these people have to keep up to date with policy changes, ongoing licensing requirements. They have to have an intimate working knowledge of the Canadian immigration system and the available uh, roads that you can travel down to get your visa to qualify should you apply. Um, they are regulated and licensed. So they have respect when they're dealing with Immigration Canada, they have jumped through the hurdles themselves to become a resident expert that can represent you in the uh, rigorous visa application process. They have to, like I said, stay up to date on the regulations. They have to do professional development courses every year uh, to renew their licenses. They have a strict code of conduct as delegated representatives. Uh, they are going to make sure that your interests are protected and that of Immigration Canada. They are fully knowledgeable and competent to ensure that they stay in good standing with the authorities and in part the authorities uh, will look at the application from that individual on your behalf and say, well, I know that this application has come from a vetted source, that it's done correctly, and I've been dealing with this person uh, many times. In saying that, how hard is it to just pick up the phone and call Immigration Canada? Well, I live in Canada and I can tell you right now that I find that challenging for me. So these people will become your liaison uh, with Immigration Canada. So uh, anyone that's tried to contact a government agency knows how troublesome and time consuming that can be. Well, these individuals have done this not just for you, they've done it for thousands of people. So they will make sure that they know who to call, where to call and how to get in touch with people to make sure that your process moves along more expeditiously so that you can get in, in the door to your training and your future career. And the last couple of points I wanna to touch on about this RCIC is all about you. The immigration strategy for applying for a visa is very specific to you as an individual, where you come from, your background, your history, all of these things are very much about you. The immigration consultant will sit there and work with you on your application to make sure that you have ticked off all the boxes that you need to so that you can be successful in getting your visa. They can also offer a different perspective based on your background. We've seen cases where people have applied, been turned down or denied, and through consultation with uh, RCIC, have gone on to get approvals because they followed the right process, they received the right guidance, and they had the best customized immigration plans for visa uh, for themselves. And 
The last thing I'll touch on uh, with the uh, RCIC is that your paperwork and all of these things are taken care of. This is a very, very valuable process. We have seen it work. We're very excited about it. We've seen it work in re as recent as the last couple of weeks of people who have been over the moon uh, celebratory about getting their visa approved. And in some cases, individuals who have had poor success in the process in the past. So just keep in mind that when you come here and you do our comprehensive program, the visa assistance program to the RCIC is very valuable and our team at MFC Training can certainly get you in touch and get our initial survey out to you so that you, we can help with that, uh, with that part of the process. All right, so that is it. I'll hand it over to Lydia here now to talk a little bit more about the program requirements. Um, so your next question might be, well, how do I apply to MFC? Well, here are the requirements. Uh, you need to hold a category one medical. Um, if you don't know, uh, it has to be done by a Transport Canada approved examiner. Um, we have a list of places that we can definitely send you out and help you figure out which one is the closest one to you. Um, because there's you know some all over the world and we can figure out which one's best for you. If you have any questions about the medical process itself, like what does it look like, we're more than happy to help in that regard too. Uh, you have to be 17 to be accepted into the program and 18 by the time it, it is going to be completed. Um, and you must have a high school diploma or equivalent, um, as well as we look for academic IELTS, which is the English the International English Language Testing System uh, for a score of six in each category and six overall. Uh, so we are located in the beautiful Moncton, New Brunswick. Um, if you follow that red arrow, that is where our accommodations sit, our, our on-campus uh, dorm. As Paul mentioned, it takes all of the stress out of having to find a place where you're gonna live. The dorms are located smack dab in the middle of campus. You are uh, a couple seconds walk from dispatch the same way you're a couple seconds of walk to the cafeteria. Um, you have access, all of the dorm rooms are single dorm rooms, they're co-ed. Uh, you, you have access to laundry, uh, common areas, Wi-Fi, there's uh, washrooms in there and all the amenities that you would need, as well as the fact that you are living with like-minded people that share the same passions and drives that you are. And then we'll switch over. Um, well, once you're here, you also need to eat. So we have the buy-in meal plan. So we have two meals a day uh, here in the cafeteria, which is lunch and dinner. Um, you might be concerned about, hey, what happens if I have a flight uh, planned at the same time lunch, uh, lunch hour is? Well, your day has a lot of gaps in it. So what you'll be able to either grab something to eat before you leave or once you get back. So uh, it, it's, it is a little bit uh, flexible in that regard. So you, you shouldn't have to worry about that hand it off to uh, Gary and he'll talk a little bit more about the language side of things. Thanks Lydia. Hi everyone. Thanks thanks for joining us here today. Uh, situational awareness is the key to making timely and appropriate decisions that directly and indirectly affect the safety of all the aircraft and crew uh, with which you, you will interact. Um, an additional critical component of situational awareness is situational understanding. It is critical for day, today's pilot to understand and be aware of the situation in which they are operating. Situational awareness training is ground training to learn and practice procedure skills, enhance your English skills and aviation terms. SAT helps students overcome the fear of talking to air traffic controllers early in their training. It also allows students to become familiar with communicating with air traffic control or ATC, other aircraft traffic in the air, as well as the MFC training areas. It's also good to note that the trans, uh, sorry, the standard language worldwide for the aviation industry is English. Um, as such, the Transport Canada ALP or Aviation Language Proficiency Test is a Transport Canada requirement and is completed during the private license phase of training. Get you to switch over slot, thank you. The Integrated Commercial Pilot Course or the ICPC program is set to complete in just 12 months. This program is the essence of being a pilot. You're in and out in one year. Uh, this program is a Transport Canada approved airline transport pilot or integrated commercial pilot training program. From zero aviation experience, this program will take you through your private license, night rating, 
commercial license with multi-engine and instrument ratings. Uh, basically, in other words, it's a full commercial license with, with a frozen ATPL. The frozen ATPL or frozen airline transport pilot license is essentially all the training you need to work as an airline pilot later. You just need to build the 1,500 hours or experience uh, needed to get there. This gives you five years to do so. Um, outside of the integrated programs, for example, this would, be, this would be reduced to two years. You'd only have two years to build the time. Basically, the ICPC program is an all-in course um, that's designed for building airline pilots and will fast track you into the captain seat. MSC operates a fleet of 57 aircraft. Our main trainer is the Diamond uh, DA-20 Eclipse. We also have the largest Diamond fleet in Canada. The DA-20 aircraft is a newer model aircraft and is a, an exceptional training aircraft. Uh, we also operate Cessna 172s, Piper Seminoles for the multi-engine and, sorry, the multi-engine training, and King Air aircraft. With 450 to 500 students on campus at any point in time, our fleet capacity ensures that we can accomplish all of the training that we have on deck. With more aircraft, downtime and maintenance has less effect on our flight schedule. We have an aircraft maintenance team at each of our bases to take care of our fleet on time and, and keep us flying safely. The bottom line is that we have lots of aircraft to facilitate, facilitate all of the flying we do. This will speed up training and help ensure on-time completions. So MFC is one of Canada's largest flight school. We've, we started in 1929. We started as the Moncton Flying Club. Uh, we transitioned to the Moncton Flight College, and then we rebranded as MFC Training in 2020. And the reason we did that was to show our commitment and commitment to the professional training as, we, as we've been training people that have now uh, branched out globally. Um, we have uh, grad, we have trained over 22,000 pilots over 80 countries, and in terms of syllabus flight hours, we have 90,000 each year. All right, thank you, Lydia. Some definitely some impressive numbers coming out of our college. Uh, I think sometimes people don't appreciate the scope and size uh, of what we do. So uh, I always am amazed when I hear the, hear the numbers myself. So. Why MFC training? Let's talk a little bit about it. We, we talked in the beginning about uh, Rohit and his, and his career, and you can see how, you know, an individual who was started as our student has now moved on to become one of our best and brightest uh, out there every day, instructing and teaching. And of course, there's the other pathway that not a lot of people are, are aware of. Uh, as being a part of a larger organization under the Exchange Income family, uh, we have a clear pathway to number of Canadian uh, air operators that are listed on the screen here. And I just want to talk a little bit about each one just to give a high level overview. Of course, you can find out more information on this. You can connect through our website to uh, see a little bit more about each company. And of course, you can search them directly in Google as well. Uh, Perimeter Aviation, uh, based out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Perimeter's uh, company operates a fleet of metros and Dash 8 aircraft. They do scheduled service, uh, passenger flying, cargo operations, and a, and a, a fairly significant uh, medevac operation as well. Uh, they are always uh, a part of the MFC team for individuals that move on and looking for career objectives outside of the college as well. We have... Air Borealis. Air Borealis is a, an operator based out of Goose Bay, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Uh, very close to where I'm to, where my home is Newfoundland, Labrador. Uh, Air Borealis operates a fleet of Twin Otter aircraft. Uh, it's a very exciting, dynamic environment to operate in, serving the communities of the North, providing valuable, essential, critical uh, food service to our Northern communities. We also have uh, uh, aircraft, a twin otter aircraft that operates on floats for landing on uh, water aerodromes and stuff. Very exciting. We see a lot of perspective as uh, we're, uh, we see a lot of students from the school go to Air Borealis and are fairly excited to operate a float plane on the rivers and lakes that are in Labrador. We also have Comair. Comair operates out of Winnipeg, Manitoba as well. They operate a fleet of ATR seven, uh, 52s and 72s, I believe. And they offer a fairly significant cargo operation 
and uh, scheduled passenger flying service servicing uh, communities of the north uh, from Winnipeg as their central hub. We have Kuwaitan Air on the bottom left here. Kuwaitan Air operate a fleet of King Airs and Citation Jets. They offer uh, what we call medical services to the northern communities. It, it's a very impressive operation, very advanced aircraft, full glass cockpits. Uh, King Air operators, a very, very good company to, uh, to work and progress through as well uh, to get into the captain seat. We have PAL Airlines. PAL Airlines, uh, I currently uh, work with, in the offices of PAL Airlines here in St. John's, Newfoundland. I'm a pilot on the uh, Dash 8 aircraft myself, and uh, I started off as a flight instructor and a student at school uh, at one point as well. And PAL Airlines operates a scheduled airline service and cargo operations servicing uh, communities from the East Coast, the far, far East Coast, St. John's, Newfoundland, Labrador, all the way over to Ontario. And they operate a fleet of Q400-8 aircraft as well as Dash 8 300s, uh, servicing all those areas through the Atlantic provinces. We then have uh, Bearskin Airlines. Bearskin Airlines is a part of a perimeter uh, as well, Bearskin operates in uh, Ontario and over to Manitoba. They operate a fleet of metros, both the uh, 227, I believe, and 226, if I'm not mistaken. And um, they offer scheduled service as well as cargo uh, flights within Northern Ontario, Manitoba. Uh, I think we have a couple left here, PAL Aerospace. Very, very uh, interesting organization to look into if you're uh, for career aspects. There's so many roads you can go down here from passengers to medevacs to aerospace operations. And, and into aerospace, we they have a fleet of variety of different aircrafts. They have uh, Gulfstream business jets for flying around, you know, clients. They have Citation 10, uh, you know, the fastest biz jet in the world. They have the Citation 10 for flying around clients. They have a fleet of King Airs uh, with um, maritime surveillance equipment on board doing, uh, you know, life-saving and drug interdiction. They have a, a Dash 8 aircraft similar platform that travels all over the world. And the pilots that fly on that uh, go all over the world and, and do different work for different government agencies and contracts. So it's very exciting. There's a ton of different roads you can go down. And, and of course, you look at the uh, example with Rohit, MFC training. Uh, we look after our family. We look after our own. And as a student, you're a part of our family. And we hire within. We have had many success hiring a lot of our our students that progress through the instructor program. They come out into the college. Rohit is a perfect example of that. And uh, we have many, many more that have come through and uh, been successful in getting their instructor rating and obtaining employment at the college. Um, just to touch a little bit on this, it's no surprise what's going on in the world with respect to aviation. Um, for example, you look at the uh, pilot shortage that existed pre-COVID. Uh, COVID when COVID came around, it didn't remove the issue that existed with the pilot shortage. And the issue that it was there previously was people retiring and uh, moving out of the uh, workforce. When COVID came in, of course, everyone's seen the impact that it had on the aviation in the world. However, the, the people that are closely connected to aviation, uh, like myself, you could see that the storm that was brewing on the horizon. Uh, Large companies like CAE and Boeing released reports warning the industry of the impending pilot shortage that was coming. And all too, that's all too real and starting to rear its, its head again. Uh, for example, in North America alone, I think there's currently 10,000 vacancies. And the forecast uh, that was initially put out was in 2021 going into the end of 2022 was about 27,000 new pilots that will be needed into the system. And the global demand for pilots is going to be in the neighborhood of 260,000 pilots over the next 10 years. So it's the issue with this is that the capacity uh, in the schools and in the flight school system is, is not there to pump the pilot, to pump out the pilots into their careers to uh, into these major carriers. So the issue that we have is that we can't get people trained enough. And of course, that's very beneficial to someone who's looking for a career as a pilot in aviation in general. So the career outlook is very promising. Uh, the global demand in every country is already rebounding. Uh, you can see it happening in the news in the United States and Asia and pretty much all over the world. So 
there's no time like the present. By the time you come out of your training program at MSC Training, the, the outlook for the employment is going to be extremely strong. And when the major carriers hire, uh, you know, experienced pilots, it all happens downstream. And then eventually instructors move into those roles and people have to take instructing roles. So we are very unique as MSC Training that we have exclusive partnerships with some of these with these uh, airlines here as well as people can progress through these airlines and move into a larger carriers if they wish worldwide. So it's very exciting, very much uh, a, a buyer's market right now when it comes to a uh, career as a pilot. Uh, so now we're going to open it up the floor to you guys and you guys can uh, type in your questions. So at the bottom there is a uh, Q&A function that has the double bubble. Uh, you can put your questions in there and we're uh, happy to answer them. If you have like specific case questions, the best way of getting those answers would be to reach out to uh, Carrie and I via the website or uh, you can book a call with us um, to, to, to help like specific uh, cases. But if you have questions, we're more than welcome to, to help out. Okay. Uh, I got, got a couple questions here. Uh, first one, can I work as an instructor initially and then move into one of your aviation companies to build hours? Uh, and would you help me with that process? So the question, the answer to that question is absolutely yes. So the, the partner companies or sister companies that Paul was speaking of, that's, that's a big part of what's going on. So they, they come to look at our uh, instructor pool when they have those hours and you can definitely move on to, to one of those companies. Um, I see, I just want to know about the procedure. How can I apply for the course? Um, reach out to us. I can send you the uh, application form with the documents that we talked about. I see that you aren't done grade 12 yet. So what would happen is you would apply with your midterm marks. And then once you've completed your high school, we would, we would uh, just send us that completion and then you'd be all set to go. Um, I got another question here. I'm completing a degree in Manitoba, so that's another province in in Canada. Uh, how do I suggest? How do you suggest that I complete the training? So, basically, we do offer degree programs in partnership with Mount Allen, sorry, Mount Allison University in Sackville, um, but essentially that is uh, the one-year program that's built into uh, one of the two degrees at Mount A, the science or the commerce. So essentially, if you already have a degree, our recommendation would be to take the one year program and essentially you have the same thing. You still have a degree and you have all the pilot training. Um, yeah, and it's, it's all done. Uh, I see as an international student, are we allowed to come with our immediate family members? The best question, the best uh, person that probably talk and ask a couple of those questions to would be that RCIC agent. Um, we we're, we're not the experts in, in the visa field, so they would they would definitely have uh, more information. And uh, if you need help getting connected with them, we're more than happy to. I see uh, there's a question here about IELTS being compulsory. Um, and so that is typically, uh, as part of our requirements, it's required for all international students or students whose first language was not English. Um, to go off of that set of requirements, basically we would assess an application as, and, and all the supporting documents come with it as a whole um, and, and make a, an individualized decision as to whether we can relax that or not. Um, I see what is the total cost of the program. So the ISP program is based on the IS, I, the ICPC program, um, but because there's different add-ons that you can opt into or opt out of, um, we would really look to see what you're, what you're looking for to get you a more, more tailored uh, kind of price point if you want to reach out to us.
I don't see any more questions, but I know one of the most popular questions that I get from uh, from students is, what about the weather in Canada? So uh, don't be surprised, we might have a couple snowstorms, same way we have rainstorms in the summertime. Um, we've learned to, to work around it. Um, of course, there's a, a snow day or two built in just because we, we understand that we're in Canada, but we fly all year round, so that shouldn't be a, a concern. Um, see another one here. When I complete my training, what would be the duration of the PW, well, postgrad work permit? Um, and so basically what happens is you're, they, when, when you've done your program and you've graduated, then you apply for the postgrad work permit with Immigration Canada or the CIC. Um, they would consider your total training time at that point, and you, the work permit is generally issued for the same amount of time up to a maximum of three years. So if you did a four-year program, then you're only going to get a three-year work permit or post-grad work permit. If you did a year and a half training, then you're going to get a, a permit for a year and a half and so on. Um, but basically, usually if you know it's a one-year program, let's say with the ICPC, um, and you finish that and you decide to do the instructor rating, well, all that would count in the end. And so that's why you just say about a year and a half. That's, that's why I mentioned that. Uh, the good thing about that, Carrie, is the fact that the uh, you know the registered regulated Canadian immigration consultant can help with that process at the end as well. I believe that is that true. Actually, Sorry, yeah, that actually helps answer the the next statement. Their next question in there asking <laughs> about PR. Um, again, I would connect with the RCIC agent because they're going to have the most up to date information when it comes to what do you need for PR after your post guide work permit and things like that. Um, they are definitely the the go to and have the real world experience with that side of things. And and I will say too, you know. The R regulated RCIC is is an MFC agent, so this is not just someone that's out there. We're putting you in touch, but this is someone very closely connected to the college that works on our behalf. Um, so, what do most airlines look for in pilots, and what are the most valuable lessons as instructors? Would you like all your pilots to take away? That is a excellent question. Uh, myself, in my current role, I'm director of training for the college, but also I look our, our group looks after the airline specific training. So I'm based at a St. John's Newfoundland and some of my team members here actually look after the uh, ongoing airline training and uh, as well. So we have had a very close relationship with the flight college for many years now. Uh, team members at the college, senior leadership, the college has designed and put together a program that gives the students the skills they need to transition easily into these carriers, making sure they have the the right life skills, the right work ethic, the right courses, and targeting areas that we provide a constant loop of feedback from the airlines saying, we you know, we would, we wish that we would have, uh, you know, a little bit more focus in this instrument flying area, or we wish we had a little bit more focus in this hand flying area. So <clears throat> what do we look for? Well, to be quite honest, as the uh, exchange income group of companies and our and our companies, we're looking for students that come out of college because we know that they're being trained to some of the feedback that we have looped back into the college uh, from our senior uh, trainers that exist in the airline. Uh, I see if I prefer to be an instructor against flying after graduation, how does this work? So uh, typically what happens is when you're finishing up that IC, your, your ICPC program, uh, you would do the acceptance process for the instructors. So that's typically an exam and an interview. Um, and then you would go on and take the instructor program uh, and then you would just uh, apply to be an instructor. So that's definitely an option. Um, and it, that would be kind of the process of what it would look like from school to instructor to job. Um, one of the common questions we usually get is, a, is a visa required to study in Canada? Um, yeah, again, we would recommend um, contacting the, uh, using the RCA, IC agent. Uh, but yes, absolutely, you, you do need a study permit to uh, come to Canada. Um, typically, you contact the nearest embassy, but again, the RCIC agent could help in that. Uh, we do provide letters as well that can, can help in that process. And MSC is an approved DLI or designated learning institution with Immigration Canada. 
I see a question, uh, how do I go about having the medical certificate required here in Nigeria? Um, so basically what would happen is uh, just pop, pop me an email or the chat function on the website as long as you leave your name and your email. Um, and I can, I can help pull up the list of of Transport Canada approved examiners. I know that there are some in that country, uh, so I can definitely help figure out which one's closest for you to, to get that done. Um, and then you would just go through their, their process and then Transport Canada would mail you one out after they approve. Just seeing if we have any more questions coming through. Looks like we've answered quite a few questions. Some thanks for the feedback uh, for sure. Uh, appreciate everyone's time today, uh, definitely. So just, oh, here we go. We have another question coming okay. in, a medical certificate. Yeah, so do we accept a class one DGCA, which is from, in, that's the Aviation Authority in India, um, so medical certificate. So the answer is that we are regulated by Transport Canada, meaning that we are required to, in order to fly in Canada, train in Canada, you would need a Transport Canada uh, Aviation Medical Certificate. And um, yeah, they, they we we couldn't accept or Transport Canada wouldn't accept the GGCA. It, it, it might give you some kind of indication as to whether you have issues or not. However, I would, I would caution you because Transport Canada does have the final say on Transport Canada medicals. So um, it, it's kind of best just, just to kind of just get that one and then you, you know you're good to go. And, and like Lydia was saying earlier, like we, we have the resources and can put you in touch with the right people for, for those medical questions. And as well as getting the medical done, there's a medical examiners worldwide that we can reach out to. So, you know, make contact with us. And we can certainly get you in touch with the, with those in, individuals. Another common question we usually get is, um, is is a commercial pilot license recognized worldwide? Uh, the Transport Canada would be license invalid, or sorry, would be the Transport Canada license would be valid in Canada and for can, basically for Canadian registered aircraft around the world. Um, in order to fly in another region or to fly, let's say, FAA registered aircraft in the U.S., um, you, you would basically need to convert your um, Canadian license to that authority. So whether it's the FAA, DGCA, um, or the J Joint Aviation Authority in Europe and things like that. Uh, I see one question is, what times do classes run? Morning classes, evening lectures, et cetera. So what your day would look like, uh, your ground school would be set. It's typically set in the afternoons or the evenings to leave the daytime flying, or the, all the daylight hours uh, ready for flying. Um, so you would have your ground school set. Typically that's Monday to Friday, and then the flying happens seven days a week. So you might have, you know, a morning flight, then class in the afternoon, or you might have a afternoon flight and then class in the evening. Uh, it varies from day to day, but, uh, that's typically what it looks like. Your very first day, the first face you'll see is me when you walk into the door. I'll check you in uh, and then walk you back to the classroom. So you'll see a friendly face the very first thing that you see. I, I see a question, another question here. Uh, what's the difference between ICPC and the Life and Flight Program? Uh, great question. Uh, someone's been looking at our website. I would encourage everyone to go over to lifeandflight.ca and have a look at, at that program. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, candidates who have a commercial pilot license can apply to that program. It's a little bit different and unique uh, as a program, but certainly you can uh, go over and look at the uh, look at our website, msctrain.com and Life and Flight, and then you can go in and look at the uh, requirements and, and all kinds of information about that program as well. At the end of the day, I guess the question is ICPC is, is, a, is a part of that program. So the flight training, core flight training subjects are the same. Uh, someone's asking if uh, what other countries it would accept the Transport Canada license apart from Canada. Like I just mentioned uh, a few moments ago, um, it's it's all by region, right? So um, if if you want to fly in the United States, uh, then you need the FAA license. If you want to fly in Europe, you would need JAA and and things like that.
Um, so it looks like the questions are tapering down. Just so everyone knows, I know it's a lot of information being thrown at you at once. So there should be, an, well, there will be an email coming uh, after the fact that has a recording of today's webinar. So you can always rewatch it back in case you feel like you want to go back and listen to something again or anything like that. Absolutely. And we have, like I said, we have the feature uh, at mfctraining.com. You can, you can chat directly. Um, as well, we have, uh, you know, Carrie and Lydia are available to answer your questions uh, daily. So feel free to contact us through any method, through our Facebook, Instagram, uh, any of the social media platforms. It'll all connect you to the right people to give you the uh, right information at the right time. All right, I guess the uh, last page, just to talk a little bit about, about the next steps. So the next steps are, you know, a lot of information here today. So I would, um, I would connect with us, reach out. Uh, we have uh, people standing by to answer any questions. You can chat on the uh, website directly through the chat window. You can send an email to admissions at mfctrain.com. And of course, uh, some of the information we talked about here today, like the CAE report, uh, that report will talk about the pilot demand and the industry outlook for the next uh, little while. You can look that up on Google, check it out online, and as well, feel free to reach out and look at our, follow any of our social media platforms and look at our different uh, and keep up to date with the uh, recent events at MFC Training. And uh, for sure, we'd like to thank everybody for their time today. Really appreciate everybody attending uh, this event. We look forward to you. Uh, furthering your career, especially here with MFC training. And the whole idea of the ISP program is that we are here to help. You are a part of our family when you join and we look after our family and we make sure that we make it easy and seamless for someone who may be traveling from one country to another country, which can be significant and intimidating. So thank you very much. Thanks for uh, uh, reaching out. Hope everybody had a great time on here today. Really appreciate the questions and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Bye, everyone.